Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, my fellow Achievements. Today, I'm here to bring you a Log Horizon Season 2 anime review. As the weeks go by, we are getting closer and closer to the finale of Log Horizon. And I'm going to say once again, I'm going to miss this series once it's over. So, let's talk about this episode. So, this episode sets up the last arc for Log Horizon once again. In this episode, we actually have a lot of things going down. For one thing I want to point out is the relationship of Isaac and the Little Prince in this episode. Now, this relationship slowly been building up for the past two episodes. And with this episode, we get to actually see some more connections between these two characters. Getting to see their standpoints of where they, they are standing at when it comes to Log Horizon. Now, one thing I want to say is the Little Prince, I have to say, I like his character so far. He, he holds himself up like a proper prince. He's very respectful. He's intelligent, he knows what he wants to do, and also he knows his limitations. And that right there, when I saw his character uh, characteristics in this episode of Log Horizon, I'm like, I respect this prince, I really do. It's like, he knows what he can do and what he cannot do, and he's intelligent at that, so he would make a very fine ruler in the future. And so to see how Isaac is actually kind of being a slight older brother figure of the prince, I like that because at the end of the episode you can assume the way the story is progressing is that Isaac will eventually become the prince's bodyguard. That's what I'm assuming is going to happen because the way Isaac and the prince the relationship is, it makes me assume that Isaac is going to become the bodyguard of the prince as he grows older and Isaac will be there to protect him in Ficker Finn because in this episode we get a demonstration of that in slight foreshadowing of this element because you see this assassin, these assassins of the people of the land, they come in and trying to poison the new prince on his birthday. That's kind of fucked up. And Isaac, you know, understands that they're trying to poison him. Like, all of a sudden his earring starts going off. He's like, oh, and this earring works well. I mean, all of a sudden he slams the glass onto the ground and all that and starts attacking these assassins. Just, it was really beast and badass. It really was. Just getting to see how Isaac, as a character that hasn't had much of the spotlight when it comes to Log Horizon, managed to really shine in this episode. Like, this episode focused on Isaac. That's what this episode was. Just focusing on Isaac, fleshing him out a little bit more as a character, and just getting to see, you know, how he interacts in his day-to-day -day life. And it was really cool getting to see Isaac as a character, because he's a character that's, you know, been shown since almost the beginning of the series, but he hasn't been, you know, fleshed out, fleshed out, you know, completely went in-depth with and stuff like that. We still didn't go completely in-depth with his character, but to see how, in this episode, we just got to see more of his personality, of how he treats people people the land, or how he's training people, or how he looks at the king or the little prince, it's just, it's really sweet, it really was, and the episode, the way it did that, I felt like it nailed the way I felt about, you know, Isaac as a character and the prince as a character, and I'm looking forward to their combo, maybe in the future if we ever do have a Lord Horizon Season 3. Now, getting off the factor between those two characters, in this episode, we have a little bit more setup going along the lines with the beacon, you know, the tra transmitter or beacon thing that's trying to reach the moon and to communicate with the moon. If you want to make this giant ass communications device, you're going to need three years worth of Occuba budget. And it even secedes that. So, oh my god. It's crazy how much budget it takes to build this thing that can communicate with the moon. And on top of that, you also have it to where the person that's going to be building it says to get it to work is another hassle and an issue in of itself. And so, to see how these issues are being laid out, I'm like, oh my god, like, three years worth of budget of Akiba. That is crazy, because let's think about this for a second, okay? In the first half of Log Rising Season 2, what was the plot? What was the arc about? Getting money to fund Akiba. That was the first half of Season 2. We come to find out at the end of this episode, or not, well, in the middle of the episode, not directly at the end, in the middle of the episode, we find out that this little freaking communication device, or this giant communication device to be exact, is going to take three years worth of Akiba budget. That's, that's fucking ridiculous. That's straight up really ridiculous. And so, they're going to be in like a similar situation as they were in last time. So, yeah, it's just like... I mean, it, it just goes to show you, man, like, how much money and effort this is probably going to be taking, and if other countries and stuff find out about this communications device, they're going to have a lot of issues, because there's already been war building up, and once again, in this episode, you already see it building up, because there was assassins trying to kill the prince that was about to become the new ruler. And it's obvious that the, you know, both sides of the continent of, you know, Elder Tell and Light are both going to be having a sort of dispute or war going on because it's been 
building up for a majority of the end of season one to this point and if we ever do have a season three i'm willing to bet season three is going to be focusing on nothing but the war between the people of the land and the adventurers fighting each other and stuff like that so yeah it'll kind of be like the alliance and horde if you think about it, if you've ever played World of Warcraft or another MMO that has different factions, like, you know, different faction sides, I mean, you know, people fight each other, it would be kind of like that, choosing the Horde side or choosing the Alliance side, and I, Horde all the way, for the Horde, but still, the point of it is, okay, besides the Horde being more superior than anything else, uh, it, it's the point of that it would kind of turn into something like that if there is a war between the people of the land And it would be cool to see how that works out in the future as that progresses and see how you know the economy and everything You know structures out so that's pretty much it when it comes to that now Other things of this episode you also have it to where people are trying to figure out do they want to go back for instance, if this, you know, communications device reaches up there to the moon and they have a chance to go back, you know, would it be a good thing to go back? Do they want to go back? And you have a lot of different characters in this episode contemplating, do they want to go back? I mean, should they go back? If it wasn't for, you know, being trapped in this game world, they would not have been able to meet so many good friends. So they're, they're trying to figure out, like, should we really go back? So that's another issue that's been thrown on top of the series that we wonder how it's going to be developing later on down the road. So yeah, that's pretty much this episode when it comes to Log Rising. A really good episode, progressed a lot, a lot of development, a lot of exposition, a lot of info dumping, and had a very, very good ending. I can't wait to see next week, so tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Please be safe. Chibi out.